Greetings, unsettled souls. Go! Welcome to the Correct News. Sam, I beat Ganji doing political commentary for the media speech. And soon to be political, honey. Do me a favor and keep that name fresh in your head. I want to show you this. I attempted to go to the Trump rally today, and I say attempted for a reason. Um, one thing concerns me a wee bit about Donald Trump, to be quite honest. He has done a remarkably bad job of planning his last event. I really don't know what it is he was thinking, but I woke up today to an invite from Donald Trump, his campaign, of course, to be going to see this. We are en route to the Trump event in Akron, Ohio. You're listening to the correct views. We're going to be filming the event. We're going to be uh, uploading things all night long. This is just a hint of things. There's a hint of things to come that my computer is All right, well, that's a, that was a video of me that you couldn't see at the Trump rally. Blowing my horn. And uh, something else blew. He invited everyone to the event the day of the event, which seemed odd. So we go to Akron. We have a ticket number. We have the ticket number get into the event. So we, we drive all the way from Canton to Akron. Not that it's incredibly far, but gas isn't free. We drive up there and find out that the Trump event is overbooked and that the fire marshal has shut the event down, or will shut the event down if any more people are, are brought in. And that seemed odd to me. There you go. You can see a, uh, yeah, that works. There's a screenshot right there. That is a, uh, a screenshot of my ticket with the uh, ticket information on it. Are we, are we again live? I guess we are again live. We've been dropped like many th Every time you go to use screen share anymore, Google Hangout crashes. So welcome back. Uh, needless to say, the Trump thing did not go well. Trump overbooked the show and planned it terribly. How's that? We'll just leave it at that. The worst the worst uh, arrangement for a political event I've ever seen. Award goes to Donald Trump. Welcome back to the show. No theme music. Although I do want to show you these. Look at that. NRA, save freedom to stop Hillary. This was also very good. Don't tread on my gun rights. Vote freedom first. Now, why am I showing you these? So we've autographed them. Autographed them here for you. And uh, Christelle is going to sign them. We'll get Christelle's autograph as well. Behind the scenes, uh, $5 for one, $7 for both. How do you do that? N Hornsby at yahoo.com. N H O R N S B Y at yahoo.com you'd be helping the show greatly if you would be so kind as to do that friends we're going to go ahead and hop right into the news because uh thankfully google hangout is being replaced by a youtube live so I, i've never been a fan of Hangout. hopefully this will smooth out the rough edges by obliterating it all right uh the hill trump before classified briefing i don't trust u.s intel I, I was leaning towards giving this the Dumby of the day, and, uh, and then I thought maybe the Dunce Cap of the month. 
This is Bobbis. I mean, you look at Iraq. Listen to what Trump says here. Um, I'm going to go back. You look at the Middle East, it's a total powder keg. It's a if we would have never touched it, it would have been a lot better. I mean, we would have been much better off on top of which we spent probably four trillion dollars. Okay, now that's that's one reason to not trust the uh, the intel because the intel brought us into a war that uh, again we thought at the time was involving the eminent use of weapons of mass destruction against the U.S. and the intel was horrible. We know that some was there. We found canisters of it peppered throughout, but it wasn't the impending threat that was believed to, uh, or that was sold to us to believe, I should say. Well, it's gotten worse than that. If you look at the article, that's not just what he's saying. Again, it's the hell. This is him saying that there are forces within the government that want Trump lied to. And uh, for those of you that don't know, I didn't know this. Um, I, uh, I figured I figured there was some way to do this, but you get intel briefings before you are elected president so that if you are elected, you are treated with the uh, responsibility of the sitting president. So he gets intelligence briefings for obvious reasons, as does uh, Clinton. Hours before he is set to receive his first classified intelligence briefing, Donald Trump said he does not trust information coming out of the U.S. intelligence agencies and indicated that he would cease relying on the bulk of intelligence community's massive workforce. He's not saying he's not going to use any intelligence. I've heard that stupid thing mentioned. He's saying he doesn't trust the people that are doing it now. During an interview aired on Fox and Friends Wednesday morning, Trump, the Republican presidential nominee, was asked whether he trusts intelligence, and he says, quote, not so much from the people that have been doing it in our country, Trump responded. I mean, look what's happened over the last 10 years. It's been catastrophic. Well, obviously, um, he says, very easy to use them, but I won't use them because they've made such bad decisions, he said, pointing to apparent intelligence agency failures ahead of the United States' 03 invasion of Iraq. At the time, George W. Bush, his administration officials, appealed, appeared to convince Saddam Hussein's government was creating weapons of mass destruction, and that wasn't the case. If you would have never touched it, it would have been better out. Now, we played that sample, but um, here's, here's the real problem. It comes in the form of... Um, the people that are saying that maybe Trump should be lied to, they were saying, don't tell him anything at all. That right there, and I, I, I want to say it was Lindsey Graham, I'm trying to see who it was that said that, that was saying that it would be a bad idea to give Trump any information at all. So, you know, why don't we just go ahead and lie to him? Now, there's a very good likelihood that Trump is going to walk away with it. So let's, let's give him fake information so that when he's elected president, he's guaranteed to do a bad job because we've prepared him to do a bad job. And friends, that brings us to a very disturbing story for a number of reasons. Yes, indeed. Human sacrifice now not, not just any any um, sacrifice no for those of you that don't know a lot of um, less than desirable people tend to do mock human sacrifices and uh, mainly because they don't want to get caught doing real ones um, a lot of people have been hitting my video non-stop talking about sir and uh, the Mandela effect Again, I've not said that it was concerned. I'm just saying it seems to be one of the most obvious, um, one of the most obvious examples. I want to give a shout out to Mark Dice. Mark Dice, if you see this, full credit given. I don't know. If you want me to yank that? I will, but I doubt you do. Um, he didn't film it, obviously, but it's posted on Mark Dice's channel there. CERN with a mock human sacrifice going on. Look at that. There's Shiva. That's that, that's the god of destruction that sits in their uh, in their courtyard. Now you can pick any god you want. What they pick, the god of destruction. Isn't that just wonderful? And look, there they are in black robes doing a mock human sacrifice. I'm not going to show you anymore. Do me a favor, go to Mark Dyson's channel. He's got it posted. Thank you, Mark. Um, 
this is disturbing that the people that are going to be possibly opening up new dimensions and this, that, and the other, supposedly doing such great things, these people are having mass human sacrifices on their on their site. Oh, I guess it's also posted here. There we go. It's also posted on uh, the site. Oh, see, that didn't come up for me. You're like, you gotta love Google. It doesn't work the way you want it to. When it works at all. Uh, the Guardian. There you go. I, let, um, I shut the audio off, but you can see it. The fake human sacrifice filmed at CERN was pranking scientists. Gone it suspected. Oh, yeah. Just just cranking scientists. Spokewoman at a high temple of particle physics suggests scientific users of the Geneva facility let their humor go too far with staging the occult right. Yeah, look at that. Does that look to you like humor? They are standing in front of the God of Destruction, which we have no logical reason to be posted in front of the, the, the scientific facility to begin with. In black robes, carrying out a mock human sacrifice. Now, there are people that think I'm strange because I have aliens hanging in my house, Alice Cooper posters. I have never yet conducted a mock human sacrifice in front of a evil statue well, at work. The European Organization for Nuclear Research has launched an investigation into a video filmed at night on its Geneva campus depicting a mock ritual human sacrifice. The video, which circulated online, shows several individuals in black cloaks gathering in a main square at Europe's top physics lab in what appears to be a reenactment of an occult ceremony. It said the video includes a staged stabbing of a woman no feminist cares, though. Why? Well, because, you know, it doesn't matter. It is filmed from the perspective of a secret viewer watching from a window above. As the ceremony reaches its climax, it lets out a string of expletives in pleas while the camera is running. And the ceremony appears to have been staged in front of the statue of the Hindu deity. So they're trying to say the person filming it was trying to what, make like a Blair Witch Project kind of movie. Now, how does this work? We're supposed to believe that scientists have said, okay, we're going to go ahead and put the god of destruction, a known evil pagan god, on top of ground that has historically been pagan, where we just chose to build this Halburn Collider. And then we're going to have a mock sacrifice in front of us. Our bosses won't mind. This won't make the already tense situation that has developed there any scarier to the people. Yeah, let's do that because scientists love to get their funding cut. And they love they love to not be able to afford to do their work due to a practical joke. Did any of that happen? No. Largely nobody cared about it at all. That's not the way that happened. If you tried to do that outside your job, you'd be fired. It, particularly if you were a science of that, a scientist of that stature. This was perfectly known about. Now, whether or not the person filming it was in on it or not, I don't know. But to say that that was just a joke, that, 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 that's un I just told you the story they want you to buy. That's utterly unbelievable. And this is why when things like, um, you, I've heard people say repeatedly that it's possible that the Mandela effect, again, if you don't know what that is, it's on my site, correct, use Mandela effect, um, that it could have done some good, like pulling us away from uh, an asteroid or whatever, or bringing us back from the point of nuclear war by going into a reality that didn't have one. I'd be inclined to believe that if, as you look at my screen share, it didn't have three sixes as a logo. There it is. One, two, three, as the CERN logo with the God of Destruction and the Mock Human Sacrifice, but don't worry, nothing's going on here. The scenes were filmed on our premises, but without official permission or knowledge. The CERN spokesman told the agents France passed the internet. So, in the age of ISIS now, not only is this great elaborate prank going on with scientists, but now... You're supposed to believe that they had no video cameras and no security 
on the biggest and most expensive machine ever made, which is their words, not mine, that you could just roam there in black robes in the middle of the night in front of the god of Shiva and nobody on CERN premises are going to catch you doing the prank. My ass. CERN does not condone this type of spook, spook which can give rise to misunderstandings. No, if, if you believe that, you've got a pumpkin for a head. That's all I've got to say. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, brought to you by Sticker Junk. You can see right there the Sticker Junkie logo. And there they are, the great Sticker Junkie stickers. What you want to do is uh, go to the site, order up the stickers that you're looking to have made, and let them know you heard about it on The Correct Views. If you've done so, then you're going to go ahead and get a discount on checkout. Above and beyond the discount you're already seeing on the site now. It's something you're going to want to do and do promptly. And again, you can also get these here. Five bucks for one or seven bucks for two. Let me know. I've only got so many. Christelle and I are autographing them and sending them to you. How do you get a hold of us? The correct views at hotmail.com or nhornsby, H-O-R-N-S-B-Y at yahoo.com. You can pay pal for your stickers. Now we'll get them out to you. Dailymail.co.uk. This is one of the most disturbing stories of the year, even by our standards. Um, I'm a huge fan of all things horror movie, but this unfortunately was not a movie. Daily Mail is zombie drug flocka behind the cannibal frat boy attack. Florida team may have taken $5 insanity drug, is what it was called, before stabbing to death a random couple and feasting on the dead man's face. Now, I am kind of inclined to believe that this gentleman was probably, look at it, probably slipped this. I doubt when you look at his background, he took this by choice. And one of the reasons I wanted to cover the story is, obviously, if you did this by choice, then, you know, lock him up, throw away the key, that's fine. But if he did, then we have a different problem here. I think whoever slipped him this, if he didn't know he took it, and we're just, it's conjecture here at this point, I think they should be brought up on possible murder charges. This is something else. Listen to this. I am... Um, 19-year-old frat boy who was found at the scene of a double homicide on Monday biting flesh off the victim's face could be seen on, could have been a synthetic drug flock authorities believe. Austin Kelly Haruf, whose condition is deteriorating in the hospital, was arrested Monday after allegedly stabbing married couple Michelle Stevens and John Stevens the third to death inside their Jupiter, Florida home. Hey, Christelle, how far is Jupiter from where you grew up? Sheriff William Snyder said a toxicology report. I'm just making sure she's not going to freak out and stab you, friends. You don't know her. You don't have $5, do you? No. This is too bad. All right. Sheriff William Snyder said a toxicology report would not be immediately available, but added it absolutely could be a flock of case. If you don't know, it would not be surprised, though, if it ended up being the case. I think so. Um, it said that uh, there was a flock of drug after epidemic in 2013. It was given the nickname, as you can see, the $5 insanity drug because it causes hallucinations, psychosis, psychosis, and superhuman strength. In other words, it increases your uh, adrenaline levels, which can give you a heart attack. In a release 9-11 call, the couple's father, Jeff Fisher, 47, can be heard breathing heavily after he heard screams and rushed to the Stevenson house to the southeast Kokomo Lane to help, only to be stabbed several times himself. And you can see pictures of the uh, crime scene. Very, very disturbing. When law enforcement arrived on the scene, they found the Florida State University student on top of John, tearing pieces of his face away with his teeth in the driveway. Uh, deputies discovered later Michelle's lifeless body inside the garage of the home and was described by Martin County Sheriff William Snyder as grunting and growling and making animal noises at the time of his arrest. Now, the reason I wonder if he was spiked is I don't believe that he had a history of this in any way. So, again, what, what do you do if he was, uh, if he was slipped? It wasn't something that he willfully took. 
Um, it took deputies and uh, took four deputies and a canine to pry Harup off the victim. The suspect was described by Martin County Sheriff Snyder as grunting and growling, making animal noises, and um, they didn't shoot him, fearing that the bullets would strike the victim. They didn't know that John was already dead, of course. So that's, that's good police work there, to say the least. Um, and you get in there, so you can do a screenshot. Three, two, one. All right, moving on. That's what Flocka is, if you don't know. The suspect in this case was abnormally strong, so getting that excited delirium type increased adrenaline strength. Somebody not feeling pain, not responding to the dog bite, repeated stuns from a taser they gave him. Taking three to four deputies, an officer, and a dog to get him off, that's somebody with a lot more strength than you would normally encounter. I would, I would hope so. Initial drug test came up negative for cocaine, meth, marijuana, or opiates. Yeah, like marijuana is going to do that, I'm sure. I like how they toss that in there. Investigators will also be testing Haru for Flocka and bath salts. Uh, clearly uh, a likelihood there. And uh, Snyder said he's not going to speculate, but he may have been under the influence. It's, uh, it's a lot like PCP, and one suggested it creates, of course, he said, euphoria, hallucinations, psychosis, and superhuman strength. Again, at the at the uh, at the behest of losing your heart, your heart in the process. The trouble here is, it looks like he was somebody that was on the right road here. He was the son of a dentist. He wrestled and played football, which made him even stronger. At uh, Suncoast Community High School in Riviera Beach, he was six foot tall, two hundred pounds. They said he was a harmless teenager. Coaches wanted him to be more aggressive. As a matter of fact. He seemed like a pretty normal kid. They said he's primarily um, a, good, looked like a good guy. The, a teammate called him uh, passive. There's some pictures of him posing, having fun there. He went to a sports bar. He went. This is, this is where I think maybe he got poisoned. I want to know what you guys think about this. We got to get away from politics sometimes. You're going to lose your mind. Um, Haruf was a rising sophomore at FSU studying exercise science. Again, exercise science. The sciences, the health. This doesn't seem to me like someone that went ahead and took Flocka by choice. And LSD, maybe if that had been the case, I could argue, yeah, because most people have fun on LSD. Most people do not have fun on Flocka. Um, he lived just a few miles away from fraternity brothers, again, part of the fraternity. Uh, according to his parents, he became agitated during the meal at a sports bar and stormed off, which was out of character. And, um, and friends, bad news, uh, be careful what you drink in bars. Don't be leaving things sitting about. Again, don't live at home in terror and fear you know, the poor victim. Don't live in terror and fear about what might happen, but definitely keep an eye on, on what you're doing. Humorous story, I went to see a culture shock. Absolutely wicked band from Canton, Ohio, label, label mates on Night Stalker. And um, I sat my drink down by a gentleman so that I could film some of the show. And uh, the moment I got back to the table, his wife promptly spilled the drink. So I mean, I guess you should be more careful than I was. Friends, here's the Seacrest Motel. Now, the way I've been promoting this, I've been changing. As we, we're going to get to the Dumby of the day next, but I, I want to show you this real quick. I'll even give you the Dumby music. All right, there we go. There's your Dumby music. Um, Seacrest Motel here, it looks looks awesome, doesn't it? Guess what? It's going to be even more awesome to you in a minute. Priceline.com. Look at this. $89. Oh, it's going to update my results, but you can see. Uh, Seacrest Motel, $89. Hotel Breakers, $255. Priceline, right there, right in front of you, right in front of you. Now, you're not going to pay $89 because you're going to say you heard about it on the correct news. And you know what that's going to do? That's going to prove that you're not an idiot. Uh, I mean, talk, speak, use your lips. Tell... The, the, it'll probably be Vicky or her son. Say, hey, I heard about the Seacrest Motel. Do I get a discount? And you're going to. 
and you're going to love your room and you're not going to pay $255. How's that? Uh, that's a win. This is not. EAGnews.org. School bands clapping, but okay. He's excited faces punching the air to cheer. That's right. If I could send dunce caps overseas, this would get it. Um, this is back from July, and I just never got around to it. Sydney, Australia. Clapping is now banned in Sydney, Illinois, Heights Public Schools to accommodate students who are sensitive to loud noises. The latest in a long string of politically correct moves by Australian schools. Now, if you're sensitive to such things, I understand that autism is on the rise because we put methylmercury in uh, vaccines and then tell people to take it for the flu. I get it. But if you happen to have autism or you are sensitive to such things, you can sit the rally out. It's not really a pep rally if you take the pep out of the rally. If you've been on the school assembly recently, you may have noticed our students doing silent cheers. It's an out students. So uh, Freudian slip. Instead of clapping, the students are free to punch the air. Yeah, that's, that's going to go great. I meant to punch the air. But put on excited faces. Oh, and they're allowed to wiggle about on the spot, the newsletter said. How very nice of you. You're allowed to wiggle around in the spot. The practice has also been adopted to respect members of our school community who are sensitive to noise. What if you're sensitive to somebody throwing punches behind your head? When you attend an assembly, teachers will prompt the audience to conduct a silent cheer. That's like saying a peaceful war. A silent cheer. Teachers should also have found the silent cheers to be a great way to expand the children's energy and reduce fidgeting. Yeah, because, you know, they used to cheer and not ever, you know, use any energy, I guess. They just sat there and screamed. This doesn't make any sense. None of the thing in this makes any sense. The new site described the new policy as the latest example of political correctness outbreak in Australian schools. Yeah, I would say so. So go ahead. Call Perth, Eleanor School. Call them. Let them know you, you've seen this on the correct news. And it's utter stupidity. Uh, friends, if you want to donate, you can do so at, at the correct views at hotmail.com. You can also uh, do it at nhornsby at yahoo.com, N-H-O-R-N-S-B-Y. Donate uh, to my PayPal account and uh, put in the comments, donate to the correct views. And that particular money will be used only for the good of the show. Thank you, friends. Good night. God bless and hit share because that helps. It was greatly reading.